I, I'd say it's an ironic if you take somebody who's doing their best to get the world ready and you know putting in my case uh, billions of dollars into these tools for infectious diseases. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's Caroline from Petzold again, and thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't get, miss any episodes. Today, I want to talk about Bill Gates. Yes, again, he is all over the news, making lines in the news. So the first thing what I wanted to say, like, you have to see this to believe this. Look at, at Bill Gates smirks. He is smiling, laughing like smirking so devilish with his vaccine. He's all over the news and he's talking about his vaccine. And you guys have to listen to this. Roll the clip. So if everything goes perfectly uh, with the RNA approach, we could actually beat the 18 months. We don't want to create the flu vaccine. Uh, isn't that effective in elderly people? Most of the benefit comes from younger people, not. I'm sure you're very prepared because you knew this was going to happen. Did you, do you feel like you prepared for this? You know, fire, war, uh, earthquakes. Uh, and so government, anything like this for the 100 years. And I actually thought that anniversary of 1918 would uh, you know, galvanize people as well. And if the whole country does a better job of shutting down and we get uh, prioritization of the testing that's going on. First of all, that's why I call you the most generous. And I should include Melinda in this, too. You're both extremely yeah. generous. Yeah. You, you donated a hundred million dollars. So how is it so, and, and she never had fever. She didn't have the, the same symptoms that everybody, she never once had fever. So, so let's end on a, on a positive note. Yeah. What, what gives you hope? You know, almost a kind of worst case scenario, the ingenuity of people, the compassion of people, you know, hopefully this will renew our sense that we're kind of in this together uh, you know, in our communities and our country. And, you know, if we had kept on uh, going to work, traveling like we were, you know, we've had to use quarantine, which is a, you know, old uh, thing back from the, the days of the plague. Uh, you know, Dr. Fauci's doing a very good job of saying the numbers are what count here. But I do think uh, if we get the testing fixed, we get all 50 states involved, you know, the best people at the foundation uh, who are all about uh, high volume vaccines, Taiwan, who were exemplary, uh, saw the problem and really got the testing, community wide testing uh, done very well. And, you know, we're all in this together. Uh, we've got to get rid of coronavirus from the entire world. You know, that allocation, uh, prioritization, it just happens the number of PCR machines in that state are very few. And you wouldn't think, hey, that's the way this, this should be done. A full-blown simulation. There were a few <clears throat> a few things done. <clears throat> well, there's it's hard to put money into something. I'm really stunned at how, you know, tough it is to go through this. Uh, you know, I I even friends. Uh, that I would normally uh, go see. You know, we're doing video conferencing, which seems a bit unusual just in their apartment. Some with their kids there feel like uh, it's very crowded. So how do we help? You know, I, I, for me, it, you know, my life is just completely different. I wake up every morning and think, is this real or was it something to the world that we had before coronavirus? Is the vaccine, uh, that's a global problem uh, and, you know, so I, I'm glad, you know, that uh, people are coming together. You know, uh, very few countries are going to get an A grade for uh, what uh, that scrambling looked like. And now here we are, you know, say we get a therapeutic that's partially effective. It'll be in short supply. You know, what will the al al allocation be? Likewise for the vaccine. We can take some of the you know, mask and ventilator and other things that have been ramped up. I use therapeutic for uh, treating somebody who's ill. So that would be like, uh, you know, maybe, although the evidence is very, very weak, hydroxychloroquine. Uh, what do you think are the key elements around 
developing a successful vaccine. Is it money? Is it political okay. will? What do you think are the key elements to that? Well, we definitely need to fund the research. When will there be a vaccine? What do, how do you see that? Well, it's a perfect question because we want to get back to the life we had before coronavirus. And, you know, people are seeing the, if you want to wait and see if a side effect shows up two years later, uh, that takes two years. So uh, it, this is a public good. And so, you know, those trade-offs, the government's working on a cooperative basis, ventilators, how do you prioritize the diagnostics? That we're just figuring out as we go. Do you think that, was that, do you think, a partly a financial decision that they that it wasn't deemed to be worth investing that money in something that maybe other people didn't see as clearly as you. You know, you have to charge mostly a break-even price for things that are helping out with a, a global crisis like this. So, uh, you know, we weren't ready for this pandemic, but I do think we will be ready for the next pandemic. And yeah, your speed of reaction is so crucial here because it grows exponentially you know, if you're there two months earlier, uh, you know, we should be able to have diagnostics within a month. Uh, we should have be able to have therapeutics in more like four months. The way they've reacted, and to a degree, it's inevitable that those, that thought process will be something that happens in the future that we look back on. I mean, c can you sort of talk us through what you see from, from what's happened so far? You know, actually, our foundation is the biggest funder of vaccines for infectious disease. Uh, you know, there could have been more. CEPI is the one uh, thing that, that did happen there. And, uh, you know, now, you know, like do young, are young people part of the infection chain? Uh, you know, so I do think we'll, we will deal with this opening up phase uh, in a more collaborative is completely disrupted. You know, your normal pattern of you know, go to meetings, uh, you know, watch sports events, this thing, uh, you know, in, our, in my lifetime, this is the most dramatic thing. I'm doing video meetings, I hardly see uh, people at all, uh, and how hard it's gonna be to get back uh, to the normal life that we had before. On that note, I, I'd say it's an ironic if you take somebody who's doing their best to get the world ready and, you know, putting, in my case, uh, billions of dollars into these tools for infectious diseases. Do you see what I see? Doesn't he look like evil and happy? He looks so happy in those videos. Like, like he is the one, he and Fauci is the one that unleashed the virus on us. Oh my gosh, I can't even listen to him. Like, you get a headache. Now, the other thing is with Bill Gates is, look at this, look at this. He just bought a house for $43 million in San Diego during a pandemic. Who does that? Like, he already has five houses and now he buy his house number six? Like, seriously, like, Bill Gates, he has so much money that he doesn't know what to do with his money than to buy houses and funding the WHO and vaccines and, oh, this is like really, really crazy. Okay, here it is, Bill Gates in your house. So he owns a mansion known as the blah, 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 2.1, 2.0 and overlooks Washington. He has right now, this is his fifth house. Um, so Bill and Melinda Gates just purchased a 43 million luxury beach home in Del Mar and this is in San Diego area. Here you can see the billionaire uh, Bill and Melinda Gates have purchased an exquisite beach house front in San Diego splashing a 43 million for an oceanfront mansion in the town of Del Mar CA. And let me show you the house. This luxury is uh, the luxurious six bedroom, four bathrooms, 5,800 square foot home was sold to the Gates family by Mylene Pickens, a former wife of the billionaire Earl Byron. According to Wall Street Journal, the home originally landed on the market for 48 million on January 2019. 
The oceanfront property was built by designer Ken Rochetti in 1999. According to the listing details, the house is well known as the city landmark and is considered one of the most prominent coastal temporary beach homes in the West Coast. So this is the house. This is the house. Elegant residence with private ocean fronts. Wow, that's a really nice house. Look at that. This is his new house. White windows throughout the living space open to back patios, offering a seamless flow between the indoor and outdoor space. The large party also provide our all inspiring vistas to the Pacific Ocean. The rich wood ceilings throughout the home evoke the feeling of being in an island and gorgeous pool beckons should the owner's desire to take a break from the salty water aid. A water ocean. The speech house is latest edition of Microsoft C's old portfolio of fabulous residents. The family main residence is in Washington and they also own a property nearby in Santa Fe which they purchased years ago for 18 million from Jenny Craig founder of the weight loss program. If you like this video give us a thumbs up Give us a like, subscribe to this channel, subscribe also to my other channel, Agenic Parrots. I'm making now more content about the news and what's going on because this is so important that you are informed, that you know what's going on. Yes, I can do videos with my parrots, flying them, but there's no point in this because I feel like everything what's happening right now in politics is so important like biblical prophecies are getting fulfilled right in front of our, of our eyes and so fast the news is happening so fast like i can't even like like digest one news and then there's already another news and another and bang 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 but anyway check out my other videos and i'll see you next time thank you for watching bye